Hi, I'm James McGuire, and on today's eSpeaks, we're talking about object storage, how object storage has evolved over the years and, and where it's going in the years ahead. To discuss that, I'm joined by John Tour, Chief Marketing Officer of Cloudian. John, very good to have you with us today. Great to be with you. Thank you. So object storage, it's a, it, it gets more and more headlines these days. Uh, let's do a little bit of a 101 background. What, what is object storage and, and, and what technology does it, does it compete with? So object storage is a way of storing unstructured data. And unstructured data simply means things that you would keep around like images, documents, uh, you know, CAT scans, uh, you know, records that are not being typically stored in a database are what you'd find in an object storage environment. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's also, I mean, I think about if, if people want to store a lot of social media, if, if maybe there's a data analytics program that's going to comb the, the internet, uh, social media platforms, that kind of material of, of you know, blog, short blog posts and or photos and or videos fits well in the object storage medium. Absolutely. That's exactly what goes into the object storage medium. So it, the way to think about object storage is the, you know, the largest object storage environment in the world is also the largest storage environment in the world, which is um, Amazon S3. Mm -hmm. And and that is the storage environment for things we use every day, like like Facebook, you mentioned there. Uh, Netflix is all is all stored on on AWS S3. Um, all of the back end behind Google is on object storage. All of the back end behind Microsoft Azure is on object storage. Mm -hmm. So it is, you know, it is the largest storage environment in the world today. Well, so then what, what is it to place, displacing? You know, that I'm thinking there was a time in, in the not so distant past when, when object storage was, wasn't as popular as it is today. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. You're absolutely correct. Uh, object storage has gone through a, a, an evolution, right? It was, it was created for a specific task and it's, it evolved into becoming the storage medium of the internet. And what's exciting about that is it really is the only storage technology that came to fruition during the period of the internet. And what that means is that the technology behind object storage really evolved to meet the needs of network-based users. And I mean, internet-based users, as opposed to earlier storage technologies, which were either designed to work in the, net, in the data center itself, which is you know, the traditional block storage, or work within an office environment or within, within a you know LAN campus environment. And that was, you know, uh, NAS, network attached storage. Object storage really evolved during the period of the cloud. And consequently, it was very much designed to meet the needs of the cloud. You know, the, the language we used to talk to object storage is a language that was created specifically for the requirements of cloud. And that's different from the technologies that came before it. So I'm thinking, you know, good old boring block storage might be perfect for like an insurance company that wants to store records, who paid what and when. It's very like it's it's columns and it's rows. Is, is, that, is yeah. that accurate? Yeah. Well, so the thing about block storage is it it absolutely is great when your when your storage is being entirely managed by some other application. That's got to be managed by a specific application, such as a database, as as you as you as you said right there. Um, Object storage, on the other hand, is can be talked to by any application. You know, you're not requiring a specific application to manage it. It really manages itself. You know, it, it, it's a storage environment which protects data on its own. It can manage the location of data. It can manage the access to data. It does a lot of things around how you are making that data available and how you're protecting that data as well. And that's all things that are built into the object storage environment that you don't find in, in earlier technologies. Okay, that, that's fascinating. And I want to take just a moment more to educate myself before I move on to my official questions. And that I, I so there's object storage, you send it doesn't, it, it, you know, block storage does require a database. Object storage would not necessarily require a database to be interfacing with it to be useful. Could be any application whatsoever. You could access it from your laptop and, and make use of that, of that data within an object storage environment. You can access it from any application that has, you know, the, the protocol. And that's really what's exciting today is that the language that object storage speaks is becoming the most widely used language in programming today. Uh, Gartner just uh, published some findings that they're expecting that within three years, 
over 90% of workloads that are being deployed will use you know, cloud native technologies as their backend. Well, object storage is the cloud native storage environment. So that means that all those 90% of applications are being written today to use object storage as that backend repository. Hmm. So all right, let's 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 go. Speaking of today, let's go exactly to the day today. So, what what trends are driving the market this year? I know I think I read a stat where object storage is growing something like fifteen to twenty percent a year. Correct me in the stat if you would. But also, what what are, what are the trends really driving object storage here in twenty twenty two? We're we're seeing more than twenty percent a year growth. Absolutely. So, and the, the trend that's really driving this this is this is what is so exciting about the evolution of the space is. You know, the cloudification, I, I call it the cloudification of IT. Right. It's true. It, it's adapting cloud native technologies to all corners of IT. You know, whether you're deploying something in the hyperscaler, whether you're deploying something in a in a co-location facility or a, another service provider, or even on-prem, you know, those that 90% of applications that are being written using cloud native technologies, they can run anywhere, right? They can run in a hyperscaler, they can run in a in a service provider but they are using that backend storage of you know object as, as their as their repository and that's the you know that's the, really the trend that's driving the growth of this is all those applications that are being written so what we're seeing right now for example uh, most data protection vendors use object storage backend today so by that i mean Veeam and Rubrik and Commvault and Veritas, they have object storage as the backend technology. Hmm. Well, we're now seeing a, a really exciting growth in data lakes and data warehouses. Hmm. Though that group of vendors also like Vertica and Greenplum, Druid, and um, even Microsoft SQL are now starting to use object as their backend storage technology. Mm -hmm. In the media and entertainment world, most of the media managers have a backend for object storage technology. So all of these areas can now make direct use of this technology and benefit from that cloud native storage environment that you can deploy anywhere. You know, it doesn't have to be in a specific service provider. It can be in your data center. It can be in your colo. It can be wherever you want it to be and still use those technologies that, you know, these um, software vendors are writing to. Hmm. So, I and mean, we've talked about this somewhat. I mean, how does object storage contrast with other leading storage types? We, we know about that block versus object that's neat. Is there a situation where companies should not use object storage? I mean, is, 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 if, what is the absolute best use case for, for object? So cloud, what, what object storage is designed for is to operate and you know, provide a cloud native storage environment and deliver all the attributes of the cloud. So you, you want things to be limitlessly scalable. That's something you expect of the cloud. You want it to be essentially self-managed, right? To protect its own data, to, pro, you know, to protect access to that information. Mm -hmm. You expect that out of the cloud. That's what object storage delivers. You want something that can be located anywhere. You know, a, a key attribute of the cloud is you can use that technology wherever you are. You know, you're not limited to a specific data center or a specific campus. You can access that technology anywhere and you can locate your data anywhere and still know that your data is secure. You know, you don't have to worry about you know, controlling access privileges. All the things you expect out of the cloud are what object storage is, is designed to deliver. So you think about, you know, all the applications that are deployed in the cloud, you know, which is basically everything. <laughs> right. Uh, that is really what object storage is suited for. The only, the only, you know, kind of corner of the market that really doesn't work uh, ideally for us is the stuff which is very, very performance oriented. Because mm. if you think about the cloud, when you know, when we're, when we're accessing data in the cloud, we're usually looking for all those other attributes I talked about. You know, the fact that it can be universally accessed from anywhere, located anywhere. Usually. You know, the ultimate in performance is, is not what you're looking for in that. And that's exactly the same of object storage as well. So we don't we don't typically sell into highly transactional environments, but pretty much everything else uh, is as absolutely a great use case for object storage. The, then what is that answer for the highly transactional environments? Well, they, typically those folks are using uh, block storage. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, block is actually fa good. Good old-fashioned block is actually faster. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. There's still very much of a market for that uh, because you know that is 
that you know you take you take an all flash array that's running block storage that is perfect for transactional but right. pretty much everything else you know you're starting to deal with large data sets where you have to manage data over you know multiple locations um what's really exciting about object is not only the fact that it is limitlessly scalable but the fact that you can scale it on demand you know you, mm. you can add on more and more storage capacity transparently and that's hmm. something you, you didn't ever have with earlier technologies. You, you, they're hard, they were hard to grow. I mean, growing stor storage in the old days meant a lot of management headache. Now it's like building blocks. You just stack one on top of the other and your, your house just gets bigger. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the attributes that you want out of the cloud are what object storage is designed to deliver. Hmm. All right, let's talk about a Cloudian itself. I mean, how, how is a Cloudian addressing the needs of its clients? I mean, what, what's the Cloudian advantage? So a Cloudian advantage is that we were the only technology that started with object storage as our fundamental underpinning. Uh, we started with the S3 API, the language of the cloud as our native language. So we, you, know, you think about, you know, if, if, you, if you're a native French speaker, you're probably going to speak French better than somebody that learned it as a second language in college. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we learned, we learned S3 in grade school. You know, we mm. were, we started that way. <laughs> it's still the only uh, uh, API that we support natively. And what that means is we have the highest level of S3 compatibility. It's a little confusing, the term S3. So let me just explain that for, yes. a, for a second. Yeah. Because there is a, you know, a service on AWS, which is called S3, and that right. is a storage environment. The language that that service speaks is also called S3. Oh, okay. <laughs> and oh. so there's a, a language and then there is a service. Well, we we use that language to provide a, uh, a an environment that's completely compatible with software written for that service. So if you wrote a you know piece of software for Amazon S3, it's going to work with Cloudian S3 and you can run that application anywhere. And that's... That's one of the things that makes us really exciting. The other thing that really makes us exciting is the simplicity of the environment. Uh, you, you, know, you expect cloud to be you know, simple and reliable and Cloudian is a single software image. You can run it on you know, a server. You can even run it on your laptop. Uh, you can run it on basically anything and that anything then becomes what we call a, a node. So a single software image running on a single server is, is a node. Mm -hmm. And then to grow the environment, you just run more Cloudian instances on more nodes and you create a bigger environment and they all work together. They all talk to each other. They can all you know respond in parallel to requests to provide high performance. Mm -hmm. It's the simplicity of operation that really, really sets it apart. And then the third thing is the fact that you can create a true cloud-like environment. In other words, these nodes can be located anywhere on the globe. And that's that's where our customers really get excited about. We've got customers that have got, you know, 70, 80 nodes in a single environment that are deployed in multiple continents, yet they talk to each other and act like one single storage environment. Hmm. So what that means to our customers is now I can manage, you know, a huge amount of data with just a small workforce actually running that environment. It's like flying a 747, right? If I fly a 747, I can carry 400 people to my destination with only two pilots. Hmm. Well, we're the same way. We can we can carry, you know, 100 petabytes of data with only, you know, a few, a small number of people running that storage environment. That was never possible before. You know, it was, it was always labor intensive to run storage. And as you grew the environment, that labor went up. But, you know, we're like the 747 of storage. You can carry a lot of people, carry a lot of cargo and do it with a very small workforce. So it's efficient. Hmm. All right, well, let's look at the future of object storage. I mean, I'm, I'm going to guess it's pretty bright. I mean, do you expect it to keep pace with the growth of other storage methods? And what do you see, like, say, mid-decade or so? What, what is object storage? What is the object storage market going to look like then? Well, we we see it becoming the you know the standard for unstructured data, and by that I mean you know, files, documents, CAT scans, healthcare information, et cetera. 
all of that unstructured data will ultimately end up in, in the object storage world. And the reason for that is it gets back to that 90% plus of workloads that are being deployed using cloud native technologies. We are the cloud native storage technology. We can, it just means you can re, you can put it anywhere you want, but the technology itself came from the cloud. It's it, completely compatible with the cloud. The other development we see that's you know really exciting is people are now thinking about, hey, how do I use the cloud and on-prem environments together, right? They call it the hybrid cloud is what people are referring to it as. In a hybrid cloud environment, you know, you, you can use cloud where that makes sense. You can use an on-prem environment where that makes sense, but the two of them look and act exactly the same. Well, to, for the two of those things to look and act exactly the same, they need to use the same storage technology as the back end. You want them to be as similar as possible. Well, that's exactly what we enable. You know, we are the storage technology that looks and acts exactly like what you're using in the cloud. Mm -hmm. Huge advantage when you're thinking about how you achieve simplicity. How do I keep my costs down? How do I reuse software? How do I reuse all the training and tools and people skills that I've developed during this era of learning about cloud? How can I take that to, you know, all that same knowledge and apply it elsewhere in my organization? Well, that's exactly what we enable. That's what the hybrid cloud is. So yeah, we, we see it becoming the dominant storage technology of the future. Hmm. John, I think you said it. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting sector to watch in the years ahead. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your expertise today. Thank you.